What's up guys, back again with another video about Linus Tech Tips. Uh, this is my follow-up to my previous video where I dive into the Madison tweet thread, but listen, I myself am not, I'm not an investigative reporter. I'm not, I'm not some kind of uh, sleuth that's able to solve cases. So I asked my good friend if he could kindly tag into this video and take everything over from here. Uh, he's a world-renowned detective extraordinaire. So I hope you enjoy them. Mm, hello, my name is Richard Clooney. And I am a world renowned. <coughs> Sorry, I had something in my throat. And I am a world renowned detective who have solved many of cases in the past, such as who did 9 11. When it comes crashing down and it hurts inside. And today I have been tasked with the case of finding out if Madison is telling the truth. For those of you who don't know, Madison is a former employee of Linus Tech Tips. Some time ago, there was an anonymous post from an ex-employee about their time working at Linus Tech Tips. It was negative to say the least. People were speculating about who it was. I did a video about it at the time. You can find it up there, maybe there. The Gamers Nexus controversy happened. Linus Tech Tips put out their apology that everyone didn't really like that much. And on the same day, Madison puts out a mega tweet thread about her time, uh, not only revealing herself to be that glass door anonymous uh, ex-employee, but also, fully detailing her time at the company and all the trials and tribulations she had to go through. And I, as a world-renowned detective, will determine whether or not she is telling the truth or telling a feeb. She said she had to quit LTT because the working environment she was facing was ruining her mental health. She would run the social media accounts during her time there and her responsibilities would include three tweets, two Instagram posts, and two TikToks Per day. In and of itself, that doesn't seem all that crazy. If you look at LTT's Twitter page, for example, I mean, for the most part, they're either posting clips from their YouTube channel, which you can do through AI these days, or they're just posting memes that other people made. Granted, she did have other responsibilities there at the time, but just the way she framed it made it seem like it was a crazy thing to be asked. And look at how this tweet is framed talking about her workflow. She said she was expected to manage, plan, come up with, execute, and get approval for, and schedule all of the sponsored content on social. Yeah, you could have said I just had to make the sponsored content on socials. Like, why'd you use so many words there to make it seem like it was a bigger thing than it is? This is like someone padding out their resume. She was belittled for being a woman and people were saying her work was dog shit and that she was incompetent. Which, if this is true, fair enough. I get it. That's a really mean thing to say to someone. But what if, just what if, her work was dog shit and she is incompetent. I have worked jobs my entire life, my entire adult life, even as a teenager. And people have said a lot of things about me uh, at my jobs. Uh, you know, when it comes to like negative things, when I've run into people I don't like, for example, or that, that don't like me rather, they'll say things like, I'm an asshole, overly blunt. I could be forgetful. I could seem like I don't care about things generally because I don't. What I have never been told in my entire life is that I am incompetent and that my work is dog <laughs> It's as the saying goes, if there's smoke, you might just suck at your job. That's all I'm trying to say. When she tried to tell her management about it, they told her to put on her big girl pants. Now maybe, maybe she has an abusive boss that doesn't like her and is picking on her. Or maybe, just maybe, She's being a complainy Kathy, just crying wolf all the time. People are fed up with her, so they politely told her to shut up. I don't know either way. All I'm saying is don't judge a book by its pages. Don't judge a tweet by its letter count. She complains enough to get them to call a meeting. In said meeting, they allegedly told her, quote, do you think any of these people would have a hard time getting a job? Which could very well translate to you stink, and complain a lot, so maybe stop rocking the boat because you've only been here a couple of months and we could easily replace you. She was asked to sign a no drama contract. She frames this verbally agreed to no drama contract as something that was taking advantage of her, though she doesn't really explain what the contract was or how it was taking advantage of her. She said she was touched inappropriately that she got a warning for, which if true is not great, I shall give her that, but Again, there's no there's no evidence of anything whatsoever, so this is just hearsay, so I can't really comment on this one. Linus had announced her hiring before she had actually signed a contract, which shouldn't have happened. I agree. But again, what happens is that she frames it as this left her powerless 
forcing her into signing this contract, even though they never really discussed money or anything yet. But A, you still could have said no, no one forced you into this, you just wanted the job. And B, you actually could have used this in your favor because if they really, really wanted to have you there, have you come work there and not have any like egg on their face, having to retract their statement as to why you're not part of the company, you could have used this to leverage a higher wage for yourself. She details how there was a mix up over her Patreon, as well as her YouTube channel not being able to monetize either, even though she was promised this before she signed the contract. They apologized and corrected it, but she went to Linus anyways and told her that she was still upset about it. He told her to quote, change her priorities. This was in reference to her brother who died a week before she took the job which if I'm putting my detective hat on, means she's probably been in this heightened state of emotion and has been acting maybe irritably or perhaps even irrationally. Perhaps she's having a little bit of a manic episode because she's under the immense amount of stress of moving to a new country, not knowing anybody, starting a new job, as well as her brother just previously dying a week before. And maybe, I wasn't in the room, but maybe she's interpreting her boss looking out for her mental health and saying like, hey, maybe you should slow down and taking that as, uh, you're, you, you're dumb. Is it possible that someone who's hyper emotional could misinterpret something? She complains that people have been calling her a tattletale, bossy, and to stop being a bit. Which again, it's very possible that she is the victim here, or she's a total bit. She claims she was being fed false information to sabotage her work by enemy employees. Calm down, Alex Jones. Realistically, you probably just misheard the individual and now you're blaming it on some grand conspiracy because you don't want to take responsibility for sucking at your job. Or it's also possible that the person that gave you the information was initially confused due to some kind of miscommunication and didn't intentionally lie to you. Occam's razor would suggest is probably one of those two things, but it's a real bold claim to make without any more information than this tweet here. She talks in hyperbole about LTT not liking work from home, agreed, and self-harming so she could take one of her sick days. She frames this as, look at how evil LTT is forcing me to do this to myself. This is insane and I think only proves that she is in the midst of a psychotic break. There are so many other options like taking your sick day regardless and not showing up to work getting a new job. The fact that she is willing to self-harm just so she could take one of her sick days to sit in a hospital and get stitches is fucking crazy. This bitch is insane. And I don't think anything she says should be given any value. Staff would ask her sexual questions and call her chunky, fat, ugly, stupid, retarded, and a yes. Which checks out. But in all seriousness, I would need much more context than just some words you claim people called you. Because words without any sort of intent have no meaning whatsoever. For example, if I were to say, you're retarded, that's very different than me saying, you're retarded. Do you see how intent matters? Words inherently by themselves don't have any meaning. They're just sounds you make with your mouth you have to have some kind of intent behind it. Listen, as I said, I can't prove anything, but neither can she. She makes these grandiose claims without any kind of supporting evidence, which doesn't necessarily mean that she's lying, but it also doesn't mean that she's telling the truth. As a world-renowned detective, my gut instinct tells me that she is just emotionally unstable. And if you need further proof, I will leave you with two final puzzle pieces yet to be revealed. One, her Twitter thread is 66 tweets long. All feelings, no facts. And two, her Twitter bio reads, pro puzzler, which is childish, YouTuber slash streamer, fair, key cap enthusiast, overly specific interest, creative icon, narcissistic and objectively false, birds, nobody normal owns a bird, and she, they pronouns. She can't even decide on her pronoun. She's a she, and she's also non-binary. One cancels out the other. Let's be honest here. That's schizophrenic. 